Welcome back to your inside number 23, my channel which is all about knitting and sewing and generally living the craftiest life possible. My name is Katie and you can find me pretty much everywhere on social media as Miss Lavelli. I am most active on Instagram though, um, but we also have a Ravelry group for the podcast uh, which you can find by searching inside number 23 on the groups tab on Ravelry. And I want to start off by saying a huge hello and welcome back to any of my long-term viewers and a welcome to any new viewers that might be um, popping in for the first time today. Um, it means so much that you're going to have a be spending a little bit of crafty time with me today so thank you so so much for that. Um, I'm coming to you as always from Hertfordshire which is just north of London in the UK where I live with my husband Emrys and the lovely pug puppy Rolly, both of whom um, tend to make occasional appearances on the podcast but for the majority of the time it's just me. <laughs> and yes it's February again it's a bit of a dull, dreary day today. Um, I've managed to find a little bit of sunlight, although it's been trying to snow systematically for the last couple of days. Luckily, it hasn't been sticking because I am not a fan of snow, you guys. And I know that the type of snow that we get here is pretty much nothing in comparison to what I've been seeing on Instagram for some of you guys um, in the States and in Canada. It looks utterly insane but yeah it's just been a little bit odd to be getting snow at this time of year you know it's valentine's day this week are you guys looking forward to valentine's day i know that there's a real stigma with with valentine's day for some people i know some people think it's you know it's silly just to show someone that you love them on one day a year and a lot of people really don't like it personally i i do enjoy valentine's day emrys and i do celebrate valentine's day and kind of exchange gifts and make sure that we spend time together um i like to kind of seize any opportunity to do something nice with my husband and i totally understand the people that don't like valentine's day Day, but I do and I even did when I was single to be honest I would just treat myself to something nice or hang out with um with some girlfriends and do a nice girly night in that type of thing but whatever whether you enjoy it or not I am sending you guys huge amounts of love this week and I'm gonna ask you all to be my valentine because you bring me so much joy and love through this podcast I'm sending that right back to you so hurrah <laughs> I'm going to start off with a little bit of administrative stuff um, before we get into all of the knitting and everything. I do have quite a bit to share with you. I've had a good week this week. I'm quite happy about that. Um, but first and foremost, I just wanted to talk through the cows that we have um, for the podcast at the moment. I'm hosting two cows. Um, the first is the Andy Satalong. Um, details of both of these cows can be found on the Inside Number 23 Ravelry group. But the Andy Satalong is... Andy sat along, goodness I can't even say the names of my own cows, is running until the end of March and the idea is to knit a garment by the incredible designer Andy Satterland and we have a chatter thread going on in the Ravelry group that's full of wonderful people um, showing off their progress but we also have um, a finished objects group now which is getting fuller and fuller so well done you guys for, for getting these projects off the needle so quickly. It's incredibly inspirational so head over there. Um, if you want to kind of be inspired to knit your own Andy Satterland garment. The other cow that I'm currently hosting is the Harry Potter cow, which is a year-long knit-along, crochet-along, craft-along in general, anything to do with fibre and yarn. Throughout the year of 2017, um, I will be drawing prizes at the end of each month, and I will then be having a kind of grand prize drawing at the end of the year for anyone who has um, knitted six or more Harry Potter themed um, bits and pieces throughout the year, you will be eligible to enter for the extra special prize drawing. Again, full details can be found in the Ravelry group. I made a video specifically about Harry Potter Cal and all of the rules and that type of thing, so do check that out if you want to get involved. I um, drew my prize winner for January last week and I'm happy to say that all of the prizes that I have been meaning to send out recently have all been shipped off and I'm so happy about that, but I have some lovely prizes for the next couple of months, one, which, one of which arrived this week, which I'll be sharing with you a little bit later, but 
it's just been a wonderful, wonderful knit along so far. Thank you so much to everybody who's been getting involved and I'm just so happy with the amount of amazing projects that have been shared in the Ravelry group so far. So again, head over to the Inside Number 23 Ravelry group and just be overwhelmed by the amount of Harry Potter yarny goodness that there is um, on show for you there. I did want to have um, a quick chat about a couple of prizes that I am going to be doing giveaways for in the near future. Um, today is Sunday and this morning, for the last several hours, Ravelry has been um, down. The website Ravelry. <gasps> I know, shock horror. <laughs> it's it's fine, I know that they're working on it, but it does mean that I can't announce some of the prizes that I wanted to for this week because all of the details are in my Ravelry inbox and um, I can't access that right now, but be aware. Um, anyone who's kind of sent me a message about wanting to do um, prize giveaways, um, I physically can't kind of share that de those details right now because I can't see the messages. Um, but within the next couple of weeks, I am gonna be doing some super fun giveaways for which were very, very, very kindly donated by some incredible individuals. So thank you all. Yeah, it's kind of a little incentive to bring you guys back in the next couple of weeks because there are gonna be some really fun things on offer for you all. So yeah, I'm sorry about that, that I can't share them with you right now, but just watch this space and there will be goodies, goodies in your coming to you, your, in your general direction. My goodness, I'm babbling now, so I think we should move on to some knitting content, don't you? So I'm gonna be starting off this week, as I usually do, with what am I wearing? And the beady-eyed amongst you will notice that I am, yes, wearing a hand-knit sweater today. One of the good things about the weather still being a bit dreary is that I have been getting so much wear out of all my hand knits, and I just adore it. I mean, it's, I think, what's giving me the real push to finish a lot of garment knitting recently, because I want to wear these things. I want to wrap myself up in yarn and wool and be warm but basically this week I am wearing my first ever Andy Satterland garment that I knit up last year and that is of course my Chuck sweater. So here she is, this is Chuck. I absolutely adore this sweater, I want another hundred of these in various colours. I love this garment. This Knitting this sweater was what kind of spurred me on to want to knit multiple Andy Satalong garments. It really was the inspiration for the Andy Satalong because I enjoyed knitting this so much. Um, this was knit entirely from Old Yarn from Stash. This is Knit Picks Wool of the Andes and it's in the Cadet colorway. And this just flew off my needles. I genuinely would recommend this garment as kind of even a starter sweater for people who aren't um, big garment knitters because the pattern is incredibly well put together. It's a beautiful, beautiful pattern. It is very, very flattering. I've seen it done for um, a huge array of different body types and I think it looks great on everybody. Yes, big thumbs up for this and I'm very much enjoying wearing it today. So moving on from what I'm wearing to What's on my needles? And as I kind of hinted to at the beginning of this episode, I've been having a really, really, really good week this week in terms of progress with knitting. I don't know what went on in my brain, but I know that recently I've been sharing with you a lot of socks and that type of thing, which has been really fun, but I've been overcome recently with this need to get projects off the needles. And so I have one finished object for you this week. And also one that is so close to being finished, it's kind of not even funny. But I'm going to start off with the finished object. Now let me lay this out straight away. It's not finished, 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 because I don't have any buttons for this garment yet. It literally just finished blocking this morning, so I've taken it off um, the towel where it was laid out um, in, in my study um, on the sofa there, and it's all finished blocking and it's amazing. But I'm not going to be putting it on and modelling it for you just yet because it doesn't have buttons. Hopefully I'm going to be getting the buttons this week, and then I'll be able to share you with you some actual 
reaction shots next week so that's another thing to look forward to but those of you who've watched before will probably be able to guess what garment I finished this week because it was very very close to completion last week and that is another Andy Satterland garment it's just all about Andy this week and I'm fine with that and it is my blaster cardigan known to me as my pumpkin spice cardigan oh and it smells glorious because it's all clean and blocked and gorgeous i'm going to show you the back first because it's a little easier to do that back sleeve sleeve <laughs> and again let me show you the front Oh, it's difficult. I don't. I need to be an octopus. I need to have multiple arms. But there is one section of the front. This was blocked beautifully flat, but obviously I can't share it to you in that way because again, I don't have enough hands. And the other front section, you can see that I've still got all of the little tails, um, kind of the ends of yarn hanging off here. I haven't trimmed these. They're all sewn in, um, but I do tend to trim them after I've blocked them, just in case of yarn shrinkage and that type of thing. But Oh my goodness, this smells incredible. <laughs> I love it when something is freshly blocked and it smells so good. But yes, last week I had finished one of the sleeves and I was starting work on the second. So I now have obviously two completed sleeves. Isn't this amazing? And then I, um, for the next couple of days, I specifically pretty much just knitted on this monogamously. So I then picked up the stitches... Let me just remember exactly how you do this. Oh yeah, so you do the front bands, the, the button bands, and then the neckline, and it's all finished. It's all done, I can't believe it. It actually took a lot less time than I anticipated it would, and it's just amazing. It's gonna be glorious. This yarn um, is by Eden Cottage Yarns, the first time I've ever used Eden Cottage, and I'm a little bit obsessed, and it is um, their Boland DK weight yarn in the autumn colour, which is this glorious um, pumpkin orange. And I did start this cardigan originally for the pumpkin cow, which was in October of last year, I believe, which was being hosted by lovely Gabby and Joanna, but I never ended up getting it finished. And now it's finished and I'm so happy. One of the reasons I haven't got buttons for this already is that I do want to make sure that I get some really nice special buttons. I don't just want something generic and preferably something in this kind of orangey tone I think would be lovely because I don't want something that's going to pull too much focus because the design of the blaster cardigan with this gorgeous lace pattern around the waist I think is is pretty enough as is so I don't really want the buttons to be too distracting so basically I need to search around for the perfect buttons for this cardigan and yeah as soon as I've got those sewn on I will enlist the help of my long-suffering husband Emrys and I'll get him to take some footage of me prancing about in it because I just adore it I'm so happy with it and it's just so lovely to have a kind of languishing whip off my needles and also a garment because I just love it it's perfect yay oh, I'm so thrilled I'm so thrilled with that cardigan and I can't wait to be able to wear it fingers crossed I'll be able to get those buttons this week but the other Andy Satterland project that I've been working on is the Wainthrop cardigan and I actually haven't made any progress on that this week and that was because I kind of said last week I wanted to focus all of my attention on the blaster to get that finished because it was so close to being finished and now all of my garment love and attention is going to be going on the Wainthrop so hopefully next week I'm going to have loads of progress on that I'm just I'm really in the mood for knitting garments it's it's brilliant it's a really really good way to be feeling but I do have um, lots of whips to share with you this week and I'm going to start off with one um, that like I said is really 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 close to being done and I am very excited about that for a couple of different reasons that I will be getting into but that project is my find your page haul. <laughs> I announced that with a lot of enthusiasm didn't I but I'll go quickly through um, the yarns and the progress that I've made on on this. I have shared this in more detail a couple of episodes ago but um, find your fade. I am almost finished with this but in terms of the yarns that I've used this is Vulan Vine yarns in the uh, 
Venus flytrap colourway. I then have a homespun house in Xenophilius Explains the Deathly Hallows. That is then melting into Sweet Sparrow Yarns in her Miss Honey colourway. That is then melting into Fawn, Fawn and the Fox. Um, Lara Fawn and the Fox, this beautiful colour here. This is fantastic, Mr Fox, which I absolutely love. That's then melting into Shirsty Cat in the Candy Swirl colourway. This is one of the skeins of yarn that I picked up at Vogue Knitting Live. Um, that is then melting into Life in the Long Grass in the Turf colourway, which is this lovely kind of burgundies, purples, oranges and reds. And then finally, I have just finished the last colour melt, which you can kind of see along here, this little, little section at the back. And the colour that I am using is the remnants of um, the John Arbor Knit by Numbers um, four ply yarn that I used for my August mittens, which I took to New York with me. And yeah, if you couldn't kind of gather from, from that very quick whizzing through the size of this shawl, it's monumental. It's, it's huge. So, so big. Here it goes, here it goes and then to the to the end to that green which I'm obsessed with. This is one of my favourite Vool and Vine yarns that I've ever knit with. Um oh, I'm just obsessed with that green. I need to get some of this. I'm gonna I'm gonna be pointing Emrys in your general direction, Kristen, when it comes to birthdays and that type of thing, because I need I need this yarn for like a sweater or a cardigan or something. But anyway, I I've been having a bit of a love-hate relationship with the Find Your Fade shawl for various reasons. I am really, really excited that it's nearly finished because I think it's going to be, one, it's going to be beautiful. It's a stunning pattern. And another, I am really happy with my colour choices because these yarns and the colours that I've gone with are genuinely colours that I absolutely adore and I could see them going with a lot of different garments that I have currently made. So I can see myself getting a lot of wear out of this because I think it will go with a lot of things that are currently in my wardrobe which for me when I'm making choices about um, what yarns and what projects that I'm going to be knitting or sewing, um, it's very, very important to me to try and make sure that they are going to fit into my cohesive wardrobe that I'm trying to create in terms of a handmade wardrobe. But the problem with this project for me is that when I started it, I was unwell, obviously. I was pretty much bed bound for a week or so. And this was pretty much the only thing that I knit on for that time. And for me, that was fine because it was pretty mindless. You know, the lace panels are slightly more involved, but once you understand the pattern, you almost don't need to look at the pattern. You can just kind of knit away and it's not that much of a problem. When I became more able-bodied again and I was able to kind of get up and um, started going back to my day-to-day -day routine, I was really struggling to find the joy in knitting this. I know that a lot of people have said that they love all of the garter in this because it's brainless. However, for me, the garter rows are the part where I start to lose my mind a little bit because they are very, very long. Um, I think there's nearly 250 stitches per row um, and that's a lot of stitches and for me I was just getting to the point where rows and rows and rows of garter stitch as you can see this whole section here is all garter and even though you have the interest of the colour melting it just felt so painful. Um, I felt like I wasn't progressing, I felt like I had this huge project because obviously when you're knitting on this you have miles and miles of extra knitting to, to kind of um, uh, hang on to while you're knitting. So it does feel like a bit of a beast. And I think that's why last week I hadn't actually spent a huge amount of time working on it. But this week I kind of gave myself a talking to and I said, look, this is the last leg. You've done well over 50% of the knitting that's involved for this shawl and you just need to get it off the needles. So I am now into the last, last, last section of this, which is just garter, which oh, 
I know <laughs> so many people love knitting garter and I just I just find it incredibly tedious I'm sorry you guys I really am but I I do I just find it really quite dull to be honest but I just have one garter stitch section left and then this will be off the needles and it's great because I'm now going to be working in one of my favorite yarns I've loved working with um knit by numbers um and I just love this colorway this is colorway I believe it's just 74 but it's the darkest deep burgundy that um that knit by numbers has in their in their range for both four ply and dk so I'm very happy to be knitting with that. It's also 100% merino, so it's gloriously buttery and soft when you are knitting with it. Um, and yeah, I just wanna get this off the needles now. It's been a long time since I've been in a kind of shawl frame of mind. Um, it was the beginning of last year that I actually kind of knit, I believe about four shawls in quick succession. So this has been a long time coming and I have enjoyed it, but I must admit it's getting a little bit trying now. So. As I said, I'm happy that it's nearly done. I'm very, very hopeful that this will be off the needles within the next couple of days. But in order not to stress myself out about it too much, because like I said, the garter kind of drives me a bit mad, I'm only knitting on it if it doesn't feel like a complete trial. I am knitting on it every day. If that means doing two rows at a time, that's fine. It's, it's at the point now where I can do that and still have it done within a couple of days or so. So that's great. And then I just need to find somewhere to block it because this is a beast, like I said, and I don't really have that much space <laughs> to block out this huge shawl. Um, but yeah, that's definitely going to be one of my main priorities within the next several days to get this finished. And it will be lovely when I can wear it and just wrap myself up in it and be cozy and warm and amazing. So that will be great. The other reason that I do want to get this off the needles is that I am absolutely dying to cast on um, Mina's Snow Day shawl, uh, which I talked about last week. Uh, I love that pattern so much and I fell in love with it when I saw it, um, Mina wearing her own in New York at Vogue Knitting Live. But recently I was watching um, just this week Gabby of Once Upon a Corgi and she has been working on her own snow day shawl and oh, it just looks so gorgeous. I have caked up my yarn, I am ready to go but I have told myself I cannot cast that on until I have cast off the find your fade and it's hard but I'm doing that but I'm extra, it gives me more of an incentive to work on this because I think as soon as I've done with this I can cast on that beautiful snow day shawl and it's going to be amazing but yes Beautiful project, beautiful pattern, but it's huge and it does get a bit tedious towards the end, I would say, but that's just me. I know that a lot of people have enjoyed every single second of it and I know that I will love it when it's done. So, yay, find your fade. I have two other works in progress to share with you this week and they are both sock related. <laughs> um, the first pair of socks is one that I shared with you last week. It's living in my Maker's Haven project bag, sent to me by lovely Amber. And if you're taking part in the Harry Potter knit along, you could win yourself one of these bags um, for your own knitting. And I can attest to the fact that it is utterly glorious. I love this bag so much. I've been taking this to work with me and just carrying it around with me all day and my inside my tote bag. And it just gives me a little thrill to know that it's there. But yes, it is Harry Potter themed. And I love it. And the socks inside it are, surprise, surprise, also Harry Potter themed. <laughs> I talked about these um, socks last week and I haven't made a huge amount of progress on them um, over the past week or so because most of my time has been spent either on the Find Your Fade or my Blaster cardigan. But I have made a little bit of a dent in them. And these are the Prairie Socks by lovely Kay of the Bakery Bears podcast. And Kay, if you are watching, I'm so, so thrilled that Dan is home and seems to be on the mend and that's amazing. And I'm sending you both so much love at the moment. But this is the amount of work that I have done over the past week. If I can get that to focus, hooray! So as you can see, um, not a huge amount of progress. Um, I was about here-ish last week, so maybe just um, just over an inch of knitting on both socks. But this yarn is a homespun house, 
which I absolutely love. This is a Harry Potter sock yarn club that was in her first cycle of the Harry Potter sock yarns, I believe. It might be the second one, I'm not sure, but it was. It was Harry Potter sock yarn, and I've also got two little Harry Potter progress keepers on here. If you can see the one on this side is the Deathly Hallow symbol, and this is the um, kind of Professor Snape themed always progress keeper with the little dough on it and I love this pattern I don't have to look at the pattern at all because it's so it's very simple but really really nicely done and it just gives you this beautiful beautiful texture I really really love this and I'm enjoying working on this a lot I'm hopeful that within the next week I'm going to have a lot more time to dedicate to these because these are my first pair of February socks. So far I've managed to, well in January, <laughs> we're not that that far through the year, but in January I knit two pairs of socks and I'd really like to keep that going if I can throughout the year. I could end up with 24 pairs of socks, which would be amazing. Um, so I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to get these done and another pair of socks in February. I may be kind of grossly overestimating exactly how much I can do, but that's what I would like to do. But yes, I'm really, really enjoying working with this pattern. Kay's patterns are always beautiful and lovely to work with. My um, Duchess of Devonshire shawl that I was wearing last week um, is also, or was it the week before? Um, my Duchess of Devonshire sh shawl, my goodness, um, was also a pattern by Kay and I loved it. I love this pattern. You can't go wrong with one of hers and you can't go wrong with Homespun House yarn either. So it's pretty much the perfect combination. I have one more work in progress to share with you this week and this is a new work in progress and I know it's really really naughty to have cast on another project because I have so many things on the needles but I got this yarn last week and I couldn't help myself I had to cast it on right away it was one of those instant I must have this on the needles moments and um, you may remember this yarn uh, which I received last week. This is actually another skein of a homespun house yarn. Clearly I can't knit anything but a homespun house at the moment, but this is uh, the Harry Potter Yarn Club instalment for January, which uh, Molly was so generous enough to send me. And I feel confident showing it now without a warning because you will have definitely received this by now, but this is called Dumbledore's Favourite. And I absolutely love it. It's so Dumbledore coloured. The colours in here, there's reds and pinks and purples and golds. And I said last week that I wanted to cast on some vanilla socks to go alongside my pattern socks, the prairie socks. And I had talked about recently how I really enjoy a heel flat and gusset construction on the socks, but I also really enjoy toe up socks. And at that point, I had never seen kind of any patterns that involved um, toe up knitting of, con of a construction of a sock um, that had a heel flap and gusset. And I asked you guys if you had any suggestions as to patterns that I could use. And first of all, thank you so much to everybody who got in touch about it. I had so many comments and messages about amazing patterns that have this kind of a construction and people sent me patterns. And again, thank you to everyone who sent me patterns. And I can't thank you properly because I can't get onto Ravelry right now to find out who you are. But one of you lovely, lovely individuals actually sent me a copy of um, the Sockmetician's Toe Up Sock Recipe, which is by lovely Nathan Taylor of the Sockmetician podcast. And everybody seemed to be raving about this pattern. Above all, this was the pattern that seemed to have the most um, universal love being shown for it. And in general, it was just the one that was most readily suggested by everybody, it seemed. Um, so I decided to um, pop the pattern onto my phone, which I have done, and I have started my first toe-up sock using lovely Nathan's um, toe-up sock recipe. And this is all I have so far. And yes, you will notice this is a single standalone sock, which I said that I wasn't really going to be doing anymore, but I wanted to really make sure that I was following the pattern for everything that it was worth, for one. I wanted to make sure that I was really, really taking the time to go through the pattern exactly as I should do. And so I thought for that reason, I'll just do one sock. But also, 
I wanted to have something very simple to be able to use for cinema knitting um, because Emrys and I are going to the cinema um, a lot more recently which is great. We saw Split the other day and I believe we're going to see the um, Lego Batman movie <laughs> maybe even this evening so it's nice to have a vanilla sock to knit on at the cinema but Yes, this is all I've done so far. So I haven't got to any of the fun stuff. I haven't got to any of the um, heel flap and gusset construction yet. I'm literally just on the um, foot of the sock. But let me just show you this yarn, how it's knitting up. Isn't it glorious? Oh my goodness. So you can see all the speckles of beautiful colour. I just, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with this sock. I'll show you the back because it's obviously slightly different this gorgeous heavily speckled variegated it's glorious and as you can see it does also come with a progress keeper this little progress keeper was um, from Sucre Sucre Miniatures and it's a little sherbet lemon because that's Dumbledore's favourite sweet Dumbledore's favourite you know it fits in very well with the yarn but yeah I've been as yet, I haven't, like I said, got 20 of the fun bits of the um, of the sock recipe. This is very much standard for, for toe up sock knitting. So I've done a little bit of the toe here and then I've just knitted all the way up. So as soon as I get to the correct length, I'll start decreasing for the heel or whatever I'll need to do for the for the heel flap and gusset construction. But I'm, I'm loving the way that the pattern is written, the recipe is written, I find it very, very interesting. Um, this is the first of Nathan's patterns that I've actually, um, I, I do own a couple of his patterns, but this is the first one that I've actually used in practice, and I'm really, really enjoying it so far. It's very well set out, very clear, and I enjoy the way that he kind of talks through the recipe. It feels very personable, and it feels very debunking of any kind of fears that you may have around um, sock knitting, which is great. Plus, I am loving this yarn. It's, like I said, everything that I wanted and more in, in a yarn. It's beautiful, it's squishy and gorgeous, and oh, Molly, you are a dying genius. I absolutely love this. And um, yeah, it's just nice to have a couple of different Harry Potter themed pairs of socks on the needles as it makes me happy and it's it's good for my Harry Potter cow to have Harry Potter projects. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Can't speak more highly of you, Molly, and everything you do. And also the sock matician toe up sock recipe but I'll keep you posted as to how I get on. And fingers crossed, this could be the start of me having the perfect little sock recipe of my own for my toe-up socks. So exciting. So that's everything that I've been knitting this week. I told you I'd got quite a lot done. I'm really quite proud of myself. I'm not gonna lie, I'm feeling a little bit smug um, because I've made some really great progress and I'm really, really happy about it. It's just, it's nice to feel that you've really achieved something and that's what I feel that I've done when it comes to my knitting this week so hurrah! <laughs> um, but moving on from that I thought that because it's Valentine's Day week and because love is in the air as it were I thought it would be about time that I had another segment of For the Love of pod and this segment is where I talk about a podcast that has brought me particular a special huge amounts of joy in the past week. This can be a new to me podcaster that I've discovered or it could be a podcaster that I've been watching for a while that's just sparked extra feelings of delight within me and this particular podcast falls into that latter category this week. This is a podcast that I have been enjoying for some time. They have been podcasting for a while now. They are really, really, really well known. So you probably know exactly who they are, but I just wanted to reach out and share a bit of love to them because they have been sending some love in my direction on their podcast recently. And um, a couple of things have happened over the last week I'll get into, which basically have made me fall even deeper in love with Nathan Taylor of the Sock Musician podcast. I'm knitting on your sock recipe right now, Nathan, and it's it's beautiful. But yes, the Sock Musician podcast he is an utter delight to watch. And um I just find it very interesting that Nathan and I are both in the same kind of podcasting sphere now with knitting podcasts because 
we both come from a very similar background, which is um, musical theatre. Nathan is still an actor and performer um, within musical theatre. It was my career for some time and now um, it's not something that I do professionally any longer, but I still consider myself a part of that community. The funny thing about particularly musical theatre in the UK, or at least from my experience of it, is that it's quite an incestuous industry and with that what I mean is is that once you've done a few jobs, a few shows within London theatre and you know a few people, you by a couple of, just a couple of degrees, pretty much are linked to almost anybody who works professionally within musical theatre. The degrees by which we are separated are very, very small anyway. And I first found out about Nathan when I watched his incredible, oh, just beautiful marriage on TV because you may or may not know Nathan and his now husband Ben um, did the most beautiful live stream like live on TV musical wedding on the first day that same-sex marriage became legal in the UK because we had civil partnership before then but it was a big step when actual marriage for same-sex couples became um, became legal and it was just wonderful. I remember watching it because um, I actually got married that same year. Um, Nathan got married, I believe it was March Nathan, but I was married in November of that year. Um, Emerson and I got married then so that year in the lead up to my own wedding I was kind of obsessed with all things wedding anyway and to have um, a musical wedding being streamed on TV live on that very very special day I just I couldn't not watch it and I absolutely adored it it was wonderful if you do ever get the opportunity to watch it you really really should but one of the other reasons that I watched it was that a good friend of mine actually was one of the singers who sang in Nathan's wedding because she knows Nathan and Nathan's husband and very very small group of people basically so long story short I felt kind of connected to Nathan through other things and then when I found out he had a podcast it was just small small world. His most recent episode um, I watched which was lovely as always but when it finished I kind of went it's not enough I want a bit more Nathan <laughs> And so I decided to go right back to the beginning of his podcast and that's what I'm doing at the moment. I'm currently going through all of his um, old past episodes and I'm working my way right back from the beginning all the way to the start and it's just been an absolute joy. One thing that I would say which is just wonderful is that Nathan has very much been the same wonderful personality from the second that his podcast started until now. Obviously certain aspects of um, his the layout of his podcast may have changed a little bit, the format, and um, in particular what's funny is that Nathan, your hairstyles and your beard styles do change very drastically from episode to episode, which I absolutely love, but it's really lovely seeing these different kind of aspects of Nathan through the episodes. But I would really, really, really recommend that if you want to that you do check out Nathan's first ever ever episode of his podcast and that's not always something that I recommend I wouldn't necessarily recommend it with my podcast I feel that I have come a long way since episode one but the reason that I, I really think that episode one of Nathan's podcast is wonderful is that he really introduces exactly who he is exactly what he loves his style is still wonderful he has this beautiful chatty personable style which is great but he also shares some of his double knitting projects in that first episode that just made my heart skip a beat and that's what Nathan is very well known for as well as being an actor and a podcaster and an amazing knitter in general he is also a pattern designer um, specifically um, mostly for double knitting patterns I know that he does have other patterns available as well hence the sock pattern that I'm currently working on um, but his double knitting is really where his heart and soul lies I believe and you can see it through every project that he has created and he shows off some some projects in that first episode that literally completely blew my mind. So if you want to get addicted to sock 
watch that first episode and then either watch all the way through because every episode is wonderful or you can then just start from where he is now just because you will have had that brief introduction but yeah this has really been a bit of a love full-on love letter nathan hasn't it so it's pretty appropriate that it's valentine's day week but yes my um my for the love of pod my love is going out to um the Sockmetician podcast and nathan this week and you really really should check him out i'm very excited to finally be able to meet him in person at Edinburgh Yarn Festival this year. And yes, sending you huge amounts of love, Nathan. Go and check him out. He is amazing. Mwah! So moving on from podcast love, I have been a little bit cheeky this week, a little bit naughty, and I have treated myself to some lovely goodies. So the next section of the podcast is going to be love of general knitting gorgeousness. It is, of course, stash enhancements. I know. I'm... <laughs> I don't need any more stuff um, to do with knitting in general or sewing. I really don't. But sometimes a girl's got to do what a girl's got to do. And that happened this week. Um, I have been following lovely Tracy of Thimble and Thread Make on Instagram for a long time. Um, she actually donated a beautiful prize to the first ever Harry Potter cow that I hosted on this channel. And ever since then, I've just loved how her company has grown and turned into something wonderful. She has just such an incredible flair when it comes to what she creates. It's mostly project bags, but she's also into stitch markers and that type of thing. So do check out Thimble and Thread Make. Um, she is amazing. But within the last couple of weeks or so, she actually uploaded some pictures of some fabric that she specifically um, had been ordering to make some special project bags. And it was Harry Potter themed. And I was very much not wanting to buy anything. You know, I've got Edinburgh Yarn Festival coming up. I don't want to be spending a huge amount of money on things when I'm going to be going there. I've just got back from Vogue Knitting Live. I really don't need to buy anything for myself or treat myself to anything. It's not something that I should be doing. However, <laughs> I couldn't help myself. When I saw this fabric, I just knew that there was no question. I had to get my hands on one of these project bags and it arrived this week and I'm so excited to share it with you. Are you ready for this, you guys? <laughs> look at this! Oh my goodness, so look at this fabric. It's all kind of little cartoony versions of the characters from Harry Potter. It has obviously Harry, Ron and Hermione. It also has Sirius, it has Luna, it has Hagrid, it has Dumbledore. Um, it also has Professor Snape at the top here. It has Dobby. It has Hedwig. It has the Deathly Hallows symbol. How could I say no to this project bag? I mean, I'm hosting a Harry Potter cow this year. I needed this bag in my life for, for Harry Potter socks. It's lovely. It's, it's quite petite. Um, it is perfect for kind of a one skein project, I would say. So socks, it's absolutely perfect for. It also has a little handle and I have attached my little Harry Potter key ring that I got um, at the comic book store in New York on there. It's a little bit heavy for this so I'll probably be taking it out but I just thought it looked so cute with that fabric that I just I wanted it on there for a little bit but oh it's glorious. I love it so much but on top of that Tracy also sent me a little treat Oh, which I love. She sent me this Progress Keeper. And if you can see, that is a chocolate frog. That is a chocolate frog. And I believe that Tracy made this herself, which is just incredible. It looks just like the little chocolate frogs that you can, that they had in the films and that you can buy at the, um, either the studios or Harry Potter World in Florida. Oh, how gorgeous is that? But as I hinted at earlier in the episode, I have also received a prize for the Harry Potter cow, and that also came from Tracy, so thank you so much, Tracy. And you guys, this is going to be the prize for the Harry Potter cow for March, so not for February. February is our Maker's Haven project bag, but oh my goodness. So first of all, you also have a chocolate frog progress keeper, but get this. This is a golden snitch progress keeper that Tracy has made. You'll be getting one of these. She also has the cutest little, if you can see that in there, that is actually a cup of hot chocolate. Again, I believe handmade by Tracy, which is stunning. 
So three different progress keepers, but the real kind of piece de resistance, which is just stunning. Oh, I'm so excited to share this with you guys. It's a notion pouch. And it looks like one of the letters sent to Harry in the first book. If you can see that, it says, Mr. H. Potter, the cupboard under the stairs, four privet drive, little whinging, Surrey. And on the back, we have Hogwarts with a little wax seal at the bottom. It's, it's beautiful, you guys. It's so lovely. It's just a little notions pouch, but how precious is that? It's beautiful. Thank you so much, Tracy. It is really, really stunning. And what a lovely selection of goodies for our prize winner to win in March. It's really just perfect, so thank you. Well, you guys, that's pretty much everything for all of the crafty sections and of the podcast this week. I hope that you've enjoyed what you've watched so far. But I'm very happy to say that for my general waffle this week, I'm going to be joined by my lovely husband again. I know that you enjoyed our little chat about other podcasts, um, kind of non-knitting and sewing podcasts that we did last week. I know that a lot of you have been enjoying some of the podcasts that we recommended. So yay, I'm so glad that you are kind of enjoying some of the weird and wonderful podcasts that we listen to as well. But this week, in true kind of Valentine's Day style, don't worry, it's not going to be schmaltzy or anything like that, but something that I get very often um, in podcast comments or comments on my vlog videos is asking about um, the history of mine and Emrys' relationship, which to be honest, I've, I've talked about briefly on um, this podcast previously, but I've never really gotten into a lot of detail about it. So I thought it would be fun if in the name of Valentine's Day week and all things romantical, <laughs> that we kind of answered a few questions regarding our relationship. And I actually found some really fun questions online specifically designed for kind of couples, husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, um, videos and um, I have a nice selection of questions that I'm going to be asking Emrys and myself and we're going to be answering together so I hope you find that enjoyable so I'm going to hand over to future Katie and Emrys and I don't really know if he knows what he's got himself in for agreeing to this one but with the magic of video editing I'm going to hand you over to them and I hope you enjoy okay guys hi guys the magic of video editing. We're now in the future. It is time for another General Waffle. General Waffle. And aren't you guys lucky because for the second week in a row, we are joined by my lovely husband, Emrys. Hey. Yay. As I said a little bit earlier, kind of in the vein of it being Valentine's Day week, I thought now would be a good time for us to, to talk a little bit about um, our relationship because we do get a lot of questions so um, I have got on my phone um, a couple of questions so yeah why don't we just jump straight into it first question how and where did we meet a friend of mine that I uh, went to university with was doing a show in uh, London and I went to see it with a friend of mine who was reviewing it so I didn't have to pay which was nice uh, Hurrah. <laughs> and Katie was in that uh, play, uh, musical as well, um, and I thought she was very good. And she had a northern accent in it. What kind of a character was I in it? Uh, someone who'd never been in love. Someone was very disillusioned when it came to romance. Yeah, yeah. so very accurate and true to life. Um. <laughs> true to, yeah, basically, from my perspective, um, that was where I was romantically in my life. I was very much in the position of this character, which was I was very disillusioned when it came to romance. And it was just hilarious that playing this character who basically has this kind of awakening of actually things could be okay in my romantic life was the time that I met you. <laughs> Enter me. <laughs> Enter Emrys. <laughs> so it was at a, a theatre on the South Bank of London called the Union Theatre, mm -hmm. which is really nice, kind of like arty venue, very cool. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we met after the show. And um, I always say thank goodness that you came on the press night. Yeah, because we probably wouldn't have met otherwise. Well, yes, but also from my perspective, mm. the character that I was playing, Poppy, 
involved being in really grungy clothes, really big oversized massive clothes with no makeup, all my hair scraped back and basically looking a bit of a mess. So when Emrys properly met me for the first time because it was press night, I'd kind of prettied myself up a bit. So. I totally didn't care about that. I thought I you were really attractive in the play as well. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, and she had, a, and she had probably the best <laughs> song in the piece, and I thought she had such a beautiful voice. Um, anyway, yeah. So you liked we, my accent, which wasn't real. <laughs> yeah, I thought she was northern, and she wasn't northern, um, which is fine. Yeah. Which is, uh, it's okay. that's okay. I don't mind that. <laughs> the friend of mine was reviewing it for a website, um, which is like an independent reviewing website in the UK called Remote Goat and we bonded a over a joke about it and I sort of said yeah my friend's reviewing it for this site called Remote Goat and what did you say? I said well how does it work in terms of rating? Yeah. Do you get, so what do you get like five stars or five goats? Because surely five goats wouldn't necessarily be a good thing yeah. because who's going to want to have five goats? That could basically be a, a bad <laughs> yeah. thing and you laughed. I thought that was really funny. And it was at that point that I was like he laughed at my goat joke. <laughs> uh, and then we went on to uh, another bar, which is in another theatre nearby called the, at the um, Old Vic Theatre, the Pit Bar. It's quite a famous bar. Um, and um, had some fun there. And then when that closed, we went to another bar called Da Vinci's. Um, but then we kissed. And we were out until about five in the morning. And then we each kind of waited, uh, you know, went home uh, and waited until the tubes open, which is around five in the morning, and went home. Yeah, because that is actually one of the other questions on ah. here, was where was our first kiss and how was it? I don't remember. I don't remember either. I mean, I remember where it was. It must have was. been all right, because otherwise I wouldn't have yeah. taken your we, number afterwards. We, should we do the next question? Yeah, yeah. next question. Yeah. What was your first impression? Well, I, I thought you were Northern, <laughs> and I was a little bit disappointed when you weren't. My very first impression of you was, for one thing, I always thought you were very, very handsome. Because <laughs> you have the exact colouring that I find attractive, because he has what I like to call the Prince Eric colouring. So he's got the dark hair and the blue eyes, like Prince Eric from The Little Mermaid, so I was already like, this is a nice gentleman. But also, you were wearing, you had like um, a sweater vest on. Yeah. And it was burgundy, yeah. which is like my favourite colour in the whole <laughs> world. Where was our first date? So we met at Leicester Square mm -hmm. tube station. And then we kind of went to a couple of different places. We went, went to, to Cyber Candy, yeah, Cyber which is Candy. like an import sweet shop. Um, I like things from America. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then we went to Harrods. We went to Harrods. Which at the time was where my best friend was working in the ice cream part. We went to the cinema as well. We did. We had. We made a whole day of it um, yeah. when we first went on our date because it, a week had gone by from us actually meeting in person because Emrys had had to go. I had to go um, back home. Home to, to Oxford because I was teaching a youth Shakespeare workshop. So basically, every day for the past week, mm. we had spoken on the phone. Mm. And it was for about, I mean, it would be for about three hours at a time that we were speaking to each other. I always say <laughs> that first week is the biggest phone bill that I have ever had in our <laughs> entire relationship because that was before I added you to my magic numbers. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. ended the day by going to the cinema and we saw 500 Days of Summer and we went for a walk over, what bridge is it? Is it Waterloo Bridge? And on that bridge, we agreed that we were going out with each other and that we were a couple. The rest was history. Was geography. <laughs> Bad. <laughs> Next question. Yay. How did you know I was the one? Ooh. On the night that we first met. You'll know exactly what it is when I start telling okay. it. So obviously we had been at the bar at the theatre <laughs> and we were moving to the pit bar, which mm. was the, the one at the, um, the Old Vic. <laughs> there was a little walk between the two places and it was very cold outside and, and um, Emrys gave me his coat. And I distinctly remember this because I just thought, what a gallant thing to do to give a lady his coat. And then he was just in his, 
in his sweater vest and his shirt. So um, then what happened was we were walking and suddenly, and genuinely to this day, neither of us can work out how it happened, but we were just holding hands. We were holding hands. And neither of us can remember thinking, I'm going to hold hands with them now, mm. but we were. It just felt like the most normal thing in the world. And I've been holding your hand ever since. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> but yet, to be honest, at that point, I really do think that a little part of me inside went, hmm, I think I'm, I think I'm done. Who said I love you first and where? <laughs> oh, this is an embarrassing story. I said it first. I <laughs> was visiting Oxford for the first time. Yeah. This was two weeks after we had first met. And we'd only been officially going out. For a week. For a week. Yeah, and I wanted to say it before then as well. Oh, This was my first ever real relationship when you and I got together. It wasn't It wasn't mine. ever since. <laughs> um, so I was determined, you know, I had this idea of what, how you should behave when you're in a relationship. And you should not be telling someone that you love them after having only known them physically in the world for two weeks. For me, I just think I've never, I don't like to play games or, you know, hold things back. So I just tell people how I feel and then, Go from there. So we were in Oxford, we both it's had... It's worse for me than it is for you, to be honest, this story. <laughs> we both had had a couple of drinks. I had had more than a couple of drinks. Okay, so Katie was quite drunk. Because she I was, drink very much, I was even so less than nervous. Me. I was so nervous about meeting all of your friends. So we're, we're in my room in my parents' house. Mm -hmm. And I think I said, like, how, how sober are you right now? Your exact words were... Yeah. Can you focus on me? Can you focus on me? How, How many, many fingers, fingers am I holding up right like now? That, yeah. How drunk are you? And I was like, Ugh, it's five, five fingers. What are you doing? And then he said, I just have to tell you, I love you. <laughs> because I can't not tell you anymore. And to be honest, I think that's one of the most romantic things you've ever said to <laughs> it's me. so unromantic. Like, I wanted you to remember it. I think that because was Because I think, what you would, what you said to me at that point, I don't know whether or not you remember, is that yeah. we'd gone to all of these beautiful places in Oxford yeah. during the day, and there had been these moments where we had just been sitting surrounded by this gorgeous place, and you had said that you'd wanted to tell me at these points during the day because it had been so perfect. But then you got really scared. Didn't have the Dutch courage. You got you got nervous because it was very early on still in our relationship, and it did feel yeah. it felt weird. Mm. Even though it wasn't it wasn't weird because it was an honest feeling. It does it does kind of go against convention. I just think you got to tell people how you feel, mm. and the only reason that you don't do that for a certain period of time is because of what other people do. So exactly. do what you want to do. Doesn't if you matter love what someone, other people think. Tell them if they don't like it, then they're probably not worth loving. And by the way, I said I love you back to him. She and I remembered it, yeah. it in the morning, so... Good. Yeah! <laughs> Next question. How long have we been together now? It, seven years on Halloween, just last year. Yeah, so this year we will have been together for eight years. On now, the 31st of October. On the 31st of October we have been together for eight years. And then mm -hmm. two days later, on the 2nd of November, we have been married for three years, mm. which has gone by so quickly. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, it literally has got to the point in my life where I can't differentiate between the time before you and after you. I can't really remember what happened last week. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Aww, my poor baby. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> but I think we should probably call it a day there. It's a day. Hey! <laughs> thank you all so much for watching as always guys thank you Emrys for coming back on the podcast two weeks in a row I know we're gonna need to have some serious time off or people what, are gonna start what are you gonna do you. to get me back next week I'll bring cake nah I'll not bring, gonna work I'll bring I'll bring American candy yeah <laughs> <laughs> I hope you all have enjoyed the podcast this week if you have please give us a thumbs up please like the video. Do click subscribe um, down below and then you'll always be notified when I have new videos on the channel. But for now, I hope you all have a wonderful week. If you are, you know, going to be partaking in Valentine's Day festivities, I hope you enjoy them. If not, have an incredible week anyway. 
we will see you very very soon well i will i'll see you next week i don't know when you'll be seeing this one again <laughs> candy i'll be there yeah you'll be there i'll just mm. have to bring the candy mm. but um for now sending you huge amounts of love please all be our valentines <laughs> happy sewing happy knitting and i will see you all again soon <laughs> 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 oh no. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>